You're listening to Ask the Expert on Sprott Money News. Hi, welcome back to Ask the Expert. My name is Jeff Rutherford of Sprott Money News, and we're very excited to have the pleasure of speaking to Gerald Salente today. Gerald Salente is a publisher of the Trends Journal, featuring critical domestic and international trends long before they show up in the mainstream media. A well-known trends forecaster, he describes himself as a political atheist and a citizen of the world. He's appeared on numerous television shows featured in the media, including CNBC, Business Week, and the New York Times. So with this, I'm pleased to welcome Mr. Gerald Salente. Hello, Gerald. Hello. So, Gerald, we've got a number of submissions here as far as our questions for you today. I, I have to note as well, you, you must be a very special guest because we've actually had previous experts on Ask the Expert submit questions to ask you. So I think uh, we're in for a treat today. Thanks Thank for having me, Jeffrey. No problem, no problem at all. So, so Gerald, with the deadline of the debt ceiling coming to an end in February? Oh, you know, it's uh, the latest announcement is that uh, Secretary of the Treasury, Lou, wants to raise the debt ceiling. It's all political theater. You know, they'll raise it as much as they want, and they'll pretend that they're doing their best to cut back. And, of course, the cutbacks will come. They'll keep cutting more out of... Um, social programs, they'll do anything they can to keep taking money from us and keep giving it to their friends. So that's what we really expect. It'll be um, the same kind of theater that we saw in the last round, but probably less dramatic. And, you know, at the end of the day, as they say, they'll just raise the debt ceiling. Now, do you think this time there's a threat of default this time around? No, no, because this time there's too much going on on the world equity markets, but it, as stupid as the uh, Congress and Senate is, they're not that dumb. Although I must say, I, I I say that with qualifications. Senator Mark Warner from uh, Virginia just announced that he wants to deport Justin Bieber. This is the stupidity, right. the level of ignorance, the morons that we have, the sociopaths and psychopaths that call themselves presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, Democrats, Republicans. It's all the same. It's a bunch of people that are out of their mind making life and death decisions. When you see an imbecile make a comment like talking about Justin Bieber, you know the cat's out of his head. Absolutely. So uh, kind of on the same lines of uh, people that we can say are out of their minds, so Bernanke just led his last policy meeting last Wednesday. So he announced the Fed's decision to continue tapering and cutting down bond purchases by another $10 billion. So the mainstream media, or I believe as you called them, Gerald, the prostitutes, have reported optimism over the announcement, saying the economy is well on its way to recovery. You know, is tapering really going to help the economy, or are we still setting ourselves up for, di- for disappointment? No, the tapering is going to kill the economy. It's already doing it. The emerging markets have had their worst opening of the year in history. Mm-hmm. You're looking at um, the Asian markets plummeting, despite all the dough that Abe over in Japan pumped into the system. Yeah, the, the stock market went up 57% uh, last year. It's down now 14% this year. Mm-hmm. So, no, this is just is a big Ponzi scheme. And it was, it, when they can't pump money in, the economy goes down. The only thing everybody knows that, you know, that – that watches these things and pays attention to them is that the only reason that the global economy uh, rebounded at any level is because of all of the tens of trillions of dollars that they were pumping in. Now you're seeing interest rates are going up around the world with the tapering. As I said, the emerging markets are crashing. The Asian markets are way, way down. And the U.S. market's having a terrible beginning of the year, too. It's not a happy new year. So, no, it's only going to get worse. So it's safe to say with uh, Senator or with uh, Janet Yellen being sworn in yesterday, it's pretty much business as usual, or I think as our, our chairman, Eric Sprott, put it, business as unusual. Yeah, exactly. It's business as usual or unusual. He's correct. And also, you know, I, I love the line. Uh, you have to, what, you, what did you call Yellen, chairwoman? <laughs> Senator. No, you're not allowed to. She laid down the law. Right. Do not call her chairwoman. She wants to be called a uh, Fed chair. Okay. But, yeah. So in Italian, we call a faccia brutta. But yeah, that's for another day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that I mean, really. I mean, this is a stupidity. Don't call me chair. You know, really. 
Right. Yeah, it's just another. It's the same. It's it's the same. It's a different face, same game. Right, right, right. So I mean, with all this being said, Nandra, I mean, do you see like a global economic crisis looming? You know, how do you see various parts of the world progressing, like Europe, North America, Latin America, Asia, Africa? Do you believe there's going to be a shift in the world's superpowers? No, I think it's just going to be a decline of all powers. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing it. China has its own problems. Look, I mean, they don't call it quantitative easing. They, you know, they have another name for it. But they did the same thing. The ECB did the same thing. You know, so what currencies are you going to go into? You know, which one? The Krona, maybe? You know? sure. But, I mean, and I say that jokingly because, of course, you know, you see what happens when people flood, flood into a currency like they did a few years ago with the Swiss franc. And then what they did is they pegged it back to the euro. So, no, it's a global problem. They cannot sustain the growth patterns of the past. Right. You're seeing the numbers coming out of China that are down. You're seeing, again, globally, it's a down market. And, by the way, going back to tapering, as we see it, mm -hmm. we believe they're going to have to, again, here we are. You know, we're only in the beginning of the, uh, of the year and we're seeing virtually panic on the streets. Right. But I'll tell you what the headline story is as we speak with CNN, the Cartoon News Network. I'm not making this up. I just flashed on. Hoffman's final hours, piecing together the actor's last day. Right. This is what they're talking about. When people look at, let's go around the world real quick. Turkey, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. You see the Turkey, Turkish lira, it's at all time lows. Exactly. They just raised their interest rates like overnight, over 3% a few days ago, mm -hmm. trying to stop the run of the currency out of their market. Mm -hmm. Look what's going on with Brazil. Look what's going on with Argentina and the peso. Look what's going on with Iran and South Africa. Look what's going on with the rupee in India. Look what's going on with the rupee in Indonesia. They're all raising interest rates to stop the money flows in trying to protect their currencies from crashing. Right. Brilliant. Raise interest rates. When your economy's sinking, that'll really make things better. Then you look at what's going on and the riots going on in Ukraine, the pitchfork movements in Italy, the indignados in Spain, the Golden Dawn just got with a new name in Greece. Right. And then you look at what's going on in Thailand. People out in the streets for two months closed down Bangkok. And then you look at the tensions going on between Japan and, and China. And then you go to all of the top news stories in the U.S., the prostitute news, and we just heard that Sarah Jessica Parker right. weighs in on Christie's scandal. Right. This is a top story at a USA Today. You can't make this stuff up. It, isn't it absurd? Is it not absurd? It's disgusting. It's immoral. It's disgraceful. And until people get the courage and rise to the dignity and respect within themselves, they'll call out these morons. You know, they say politics is show business for ugly people. All you have to do, you look at the State of the Union address, you look at the leaders in America, the Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas, the McConnells, the Reeds, the Boners, one after another. It's a freak show in everybody's eyes, and no one, no one wants to say the emperor and all of his staff have no clothes. Amen. I mean, it's it's an unfortunate trend in the world, Gerald. I mean, it just seems as that, uh, as you said, we're, we don't learn from lessons past, and we don't learn from current lessons happening in the world right now. I mean, why is that the case? Again, the people don't have the courage. Mm -hmm. and, 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 again, Harper? I mean, my God, you know, when's this guy going to grow up? Abbott over there in, in, in Australia? How about Abbott and Costello? <laughs> this guy, you know, it's a joke. These are not men. They're boys. And people are being destroyed. Look, you go back to our top trends for 2013 a year ago. The top one was war. Mm -hmm. 
And, we're, and we're, the scenario we're painting is the exact one that exists today, and now people like the Financial Times and others are parroting what we were saying a year ago. Right. When you look at the military leaders and the ineptness of the, of the, of the uh, political leaders, it was psychopaths and sociopaths that got us into World War I, a totally avoidable war, and they're doing the same thing now. Now the United States is now drum, beating the war drum again against Syria. Now, I'm an American. I've got to make this really clear. Although I'm of Italian descent and I love Italy, my country is America. Right. And I believe in the founding fathers and what the principles upon what this country was based upon. No foreign entanglements. Right. Period. Paragraph. Could you imagine Washington going, uh, coming back and being president, making a farewell address, saying no foreign entanglements, when Clinton, Bush, Obama, any of these politicians going up to Washington and saying, you know, George, you're full of crap right. about this foreign entanglement stuff. We know better. Can you imagine that happening? Well, I mean, that's the whole point, is, is that it's, it's unimaginable. That, that's what it, it boils down to. I mean, it's, it's just, again, it seems all over the world there's so much turmoil, and yet, again, in my own opinion, not, not the opinion of this broadcast, it seems to be this constant focus of, of war, and as opposed to trying to bring us out of the holes that, uh, that we've dug over, over a certain period of time. Again, and, and history is replete and repeat <laughs> with failures. Right. How about that Iraq war? Wasn't that a beauty? Huh? Hey, love that one. Yeah, well, that was great. Yeah, Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, ties to al-Qaeda. One big lie, not one head rolls. Right. They, who knew what when? Tony Blair, another little chicken hawk. Cameron, Sarkozy, Halan. You go around the world, as I said, little men with bad attitudes and, and big egos. Well, well, let's let's kind of go with that now. As far as looking at these 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 world powers, and so, look, China is currently accumulating huge quantities of gold, while the U.S., Canada, the U.K. can't seem to get rid of their reserves fast enough. So, why is the West set on getting rid of their gold, while China does the opposite? You know, are the West so secure that a gold back one couldn't possibly exist? Is that what it is? Is it arrogance? No, I, I believe what they're trying to do, and they continue to try to do, is drive down the price of gold. Right. And again, when you go back and you look at the stupidity of, uh, what was it, uh, Gordon Brown, I believe, mm -hmm. in, in the UK in, in late 1990s, he sold gold, he, un un <laughs> he sold the gold <laughs> reserves that they had in the UK at just about the bottom of the market. Right. These are not smart people. They're shrewd people, mm -hmm. which is very different. And the Chinese have been around a long time, mm -hmm. as the as India as well. And and the people know the value of real value, and they know fiat currencies become worthless, just like you're seeing happening in in Argentina and other countries. So I don't think the West is so secure um, that they don't think a gold back yuan. Uh, could not possibly exist. I just think they're playing the short-term game, and they're trying to do everything they can to keep people out of the gold market. Because when pe people go into gold, it's a recognition of the worthlessness of the fiat currencies. Right. And if anybody says the market isn't rigged, okay, neither was the LIBOR, right? right. Neither was the Forex, right? Mm -hmm. You know, of course it's rigged. You have to be stupid not to believe it's rigged. The whole game is rigged. The proof is there. So with the idea of this gold suppression now, so like, what do you think needs to happen for gold prices to spike up to its true price? Well, I think it's going to happen um, uh, when you're going to see a reversal of the tapering. Mm -hmm. They're going to come up with a new name. Now that they have Yellen in there, maybe they'll call it Yellenomics, you know. And they'll come up with a new scheme to dump dough into the systems, mm -hmm. whether it's China, ECB, U.S., uh, Japan, any, all the countries, they're going to come up with schemes. So the more schemes undreamed of that they come up with to pump more dough into the economies, that's going to push the price of gold up because now people know that it's all a game, the, the, uh, the printing. So I've never been one uh, that, had, although I don't you know, knock other people, for me it wasn't so much inflation. It was more of gold was going to become more valuable because of currency devaluation. Mm -hmm. the, the result is the same, but the concept is different. Often with inflation, it's a, uh, a supply and demand issue. 
So if you're selling oil, for example, and there's short supply, the price goes up. It's inflated. And But this isn't – now prices, I believe, as you're seeing with many commodities, are going down. But it's going to cost more to buy them because your currency is worth less. Right, right. So that's the way I see it. And so the true price of gold is going to spike up, I believe, but when they start, again, devaluating the currencies by pumping more of them into the economy. Right. Now, I've heard you talk about gold before as well. I mean, we just talked about it now. What are your thoughts on silver? You know, I, I bought my first buy of gold at 187.50 an ounce right. back in, uh, I think it was 1978. Hmm. And I've always been more um, of a gold guy. Right. Uh, silver, you know, go- Silver is also, it has an industrial value to it, mm-hmm. where gold has less of one. So if, if I look at it as though, if economies really go down and production is really low in manufacturing, right. you're going to have less demand for, for silver as a commodity, mm-hmm. where gold is more pegged as a, uh, a precious metal in terms of safe havens, and um, a historical element that goes back to, I guess, the beginning of the written word of having value. So I don't, I'm not as well versed on silver to make a good forecast. My best forecast is that silver prices will go up with gold, uh, but I don't think they're going to. I think gold prices are going to go higher in terms of percentage of growth. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So in conclusion, Joe, like, uh, I guess on, on your side of things here, so can you tell the listeners about any of the services you provide and also any sort of upcoming speaking events or engagements that you're involved in? Well, we have the Trends Journal, which is our quarterly newsletter, and the new edition is just coming out. Mm-hmm. And we also do every weekday night, Monday through Friday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I do trends in the news, the real news that's going on to keep you ahead and top of the news and ahead of the trends. It's news like you won't see anywhere else. And we send out trend alerts on a need-to-know basis. And, of course, we um, I do have speaking engagements, but none coming up shortly because I've been pulling back on them. Uh, our workload is so heavy here that um, I'm not into traveling much these days, and I don't like I don't like getting uh, felt up at the airport because I won't go through the uh, x-ray machine. So it's not fun to fly. Right, right. Well, well, good to hear. Glad to hear that you're busy. Busy is always good, Gerald. Oh, yeah, very knock on wood and spit, as they say, to cover all the bases. But again, I have to say that the magazine we put out, the Trends Journal, it's 52 pages, full color, with no advertisements. Right. So there's really no magazine like it in the world, and our international audience is huge. Mm -hmm. And because particularly, I was talking about the stupid news that they 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 give us in the states, and people around the world want to know really what's going on, so they can prepare ahead and um, and plan ahead. And the Trends Journal really gives a global view that really no other magazine does. And I concur as well, Joe. I've uh... You know, in, in researching you as well, I've gone through and read the journal, and it's it's a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of work. So congratulations well, thank you. on that. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So on that note, I'd like to thank Gerald Salente for joining us today. Thank you, Gerald. Really appreciate that. Hopefully we can have you again another time as well, too. Oh, thank you so much, Jeffrey. Love to. Not a problem at all. And again, to all our listeners, thank you for listening. And please, please visit us at SproutMoney.com for all of your gold, silver, platinum, precious metal needs, and information as well, too. For Sprout Money News and Ask the Expert, I'm Jeff Rutherford. Thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye.